Hey there, I'm Tiffany Youngren, host of Next Step Nation, where we help podcasters and YouTubers with vision become preeminent thought leaders in their industries. You're about to have the incredible opportunity to listen as we dig into the why, who, and what of a podcaster show. And then at the end, we're going to identify one powerful how, one action she can take for results in the next 30 days. Today, let's welcome Ashley McCatton, host of Play With Fire podcast. Ashley, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. I've been really looking forward to this. I am really excited to be here as well. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you being here. The Play With Pod, the Play With Fire podcast has released 29 episodes from September 16th of 2019 until the day of this recording, which is August 17th, 2021. Ashley is an ultra runner and entrepreneur who helps people use the power of storytelling to grow their businesses. So Ashley, why did you start the Play With Fire podcast? The real answer is I was really burnt out making stuff for other people and wasn't creative anymore. And Mm. I started my business and it was connected to ultra running because I loved hearing people's stories. When you run next to somebody for a really long time, you end up telling them your life story. So I loved hearing people's stories and I missed that connection in my business because it just came um, very nuts and bolts side of marketing. And so I said, why not just create something just for me and have it be a fun experiment. And um, I had tried to the year before, but it was during the car fire here in Northern California. So I just thought it wasn't a good time to release something called play with fire. Oh gosh. (laughs) (laughs) So I waited a year and then reached out to guests again. And, um, yeah, I got yeses from some of the very first people I had asked that were some of my like top dream, uh, dream interviewers. Um, so that's how it all started was just a yes. And, uh, an idea that it's going to make something for me. That is so great. So, uh, so I'm hearing it was a creative outlet. So you're yes. able to kind of fulfill that need, you know, as business owners so often, don't we just have to focus on all the businessy stuff of it? And I know create as a creative that probably you need that to kind of keep something. It. So how has that helped your business or, or impacted it? Has it been um, the way that you thought or, you know, it never goes the way you thought, which you always <laughs> know too, when you start. Um, but yeah, right away, um, even from the intro, the song that's called play with fire by the artist, I had heard it, um, as I was getting those first few yeses, just to, for interviews, um, heard the song on Pandora, reached out to the artist on Facebook and said, Hey, you have this song. <laughs> and it's like, like there can be no other song except for this one for my podcast. And so he had said yes. And then later came on the show as well. Um, so, you know, it taught me a lot of things, not just from creative making things work and happen. Um, but also just, it was just became fun again. And I ended up couldn't help myself connecting it back to business, but it, it was the very, again, the core of how I even began. So it was super, super fun from a creative standpoint. I love it. So who was the artist that I'm in love with your intro. Okay. Sam Tenez. Um, yeah. And he since has been signed by a bigger label. And so it's just been neat watching what can happen with people in a year, um, two years now. Um, but yeah, he was fantastic. And then my first person that I wanted to be on the show was, Ben Von Wong, who is a, he calls himself a social advocate, but he was a famous photographer that I'd follow for a really long time. And so he was my first yes. And then Sam's and I was like, oh God, no, this is happening. Like, no, I have to make this podcast. So it was was very exciting. Yeah. Once you get the, you know, I, I love the order in which you did things. I love that it started with creativity. Then it turned into this big relational dynamic, relationally Mm -hmm. dynamic situation that it feels like that spurred you on even more. And then from there, it became a demand like, well, now I have to, I have to publish it because I have a responsibility to all these people. So I love it. You know, I, one of the things I like to say is do it and the feeling will follow. And really your feeling was first and then you did it, but then you're responsible to see it through. (laughs) So, uh, it's kind of like pushing play. Like I, the other thing, you know, when I was, when I would work out to, I don't run, I'm so jealous, honestly, if I'm being honest, anyone who loves to run, I have this huge amount of, uh, you know, I wish I could just love that, but but I'm more of a like beach body, turn on the video type I, person. That's how it started. It awesome. started because of the insanity workout and then oh, I just awesome. took it to the extreme. I just kept going. 
Oh, I love that. That's so awesome. Well, yeah. now I do hydro, but that's a whole nother thing. But, but ultimately I always say like, once you push play, it's over, you know, yeah. it's playing. It's not like you're not going to work out at that point. So I feel like that's what you did with podcasting is you just like hit play, hit record and, and made it happen. So now what do you have any sense of, um, I feel like I, I have like three questions. I'm all <laughs> jumbled up, but so I'm, I'm thinking about your business. Yeah. You're, you're about storytelling and branding and helping business connect to that. How is your podcast? Is it connected to that at all? Or is it really just to fulfill you so that you can do a better job? How is that really, how are the two related? Great, great question. Um, so when my, when I first started the podcast, I was known for sort of a jack of all trades and marketing, um, by accident became an, a boutique agency of one, which was not my intent, but then specialized in messaging. And so through the podcasting, um, quickly, again, I realized I really like hearing people's stories. It's about the stories and also, um, which I'm sure we'll get to during my hiatus of podcasting, it's the one things that I've seen people that have like the breakout moments and um, why I connect and buy things off of TikTok or from podcasts. It was from hearing people's stories. So I was like, okay, it's yes, messaging, but it's, it's really the storytelling piece that that's, I think the next iteration and pivot in my business. So, and while I was um, interviewing, I just started again, had a list of like, these people would be really cool to talk to and know. And then how do I also bring up some of my friends that do really cool and weird things with me um, as I grow as well. And trying to find in that podcast, like a common thread that ties all these interesting people together. And so then um, my business now is pivoted to that storytelling piece, which is also where I've gotten kind of stuck where I'm like, I just want to tell stories. Like, I just want to tell everybody's stories. I want to hear everybody's stories. And then in my business, like pivoting that. So I think now it, it matches way better than where I was when I'm first, but it was definitely the, the impetus to kind of change everything, which is funny um, how that all works. You know, you start a, a side curiosity and now it's taken over. I think everything. So am I hearing you correctly that your services are going to more reflect what you're playing out in the podcasting side of things? Yeah. And they have, like, I've been testing for the last year. Um, what happens when people come to me because branding is still the thing. Um, cause I think of storytelling, like making a TV series or business, like a TV series. So you need like a main character, which is usually us in our business. And our clients are also the main characters. So how do you, how do you make a TV series? If you were to look at marketing like that, to make it compelling enough to where people want to tune into your podcast um, or your YouTube channel or whatever you're doing. So that's, that's what I've been testing and playing with over those last year is really um, going back into the more creative side of it, but with still the structure, which is why people would come to me um, of how to do it and the brand building side. But it's, again, it's, it's been interesting to go listening back to even those episodes and reaching out to some of those past guests. Um, it's all just been, um, it's just been there in my face. Like the, it's just been the branding, the storytelling, and then how to then leverage the, the podcast to really make that be a great way to either, um, you know, show what I do, like brand awareness or actually be more of a, a lead magnet. And so that's kind of where I'm stuck. I love it. So now you're just kind of determining what direction you want to go in that sense. And you yeah. mentioned your hiatus. Can you just, you want to, now's um, a good time to talk about that. <laughs> so I had, when I started, because I had heard that you should give your podcast like two years. I don't know where I heard it from, probably from some podcaster. So give it two years. And I said, yeah, that makes sense. Cause one year I could stick to anything with the two gets interesting. And then right away, I heard once I got into it a little deeper, I heard five and I was like, that is a long time. Like that's a big commitment. So I had kind of had in my head three and I had several people lined up. And then, um, towards the end of, I think, what was it? 2000, it must've been 2019. Um, there, some of them like got really sick and then the pandemic hit. And so then people started canceling for other reasons and it was really hard to find guests. And then I could find guests that were, um, 
no names, you know, like myself, for instance. Um, but I was trying to find that combination of like well-known people with regular people to kind of show my audience that everybody has a similar story. It's just remixed a bit different. And so everything kind of fell off. And so I, I have probably 10 episodes in the queue that I just haven't launched yet because it's when are things going to stabilize enough? And then also as my business has changed now, has kind of paused, but it was, so it's not done. And I literally just sent out an email this week to my list for, for my podcast saying like, I have new episodes coming like by the end. And I put a date. So that way I would be again, hit play. Cause it's happening, like no matter <laughs> what. Um, but it, it was at first, like, you know, it had kind of stopped because of um, some big names that I had had lined up, all of them back to back canceled. And so I didn't know how to, um, just say like, Oh, we're on vacation. Like, I didn't know how to handle that. Cause I was a new podcaster. So. Yeah. So what's your date? September 15th, September 15th. Awesome. Yep. Look forward to it. Yeah. You know, podcasting exploded with COVID, but I feel like a lot of us where that's what we did before we're a little bit stunned and it really changed how we podcast. I think, mm -hmm. I think it's, there's just in a lot of ways it's improved because there are a lot more tools. And I mean, everybody's got podcasting ideas, which is, you know, good and bad because <laughs> now we're filtering. Cause we're like, you know, now there are millions of people with an opinion on how the best way to podcast, but, um, but it's good that you were there before and you have a sense of what was working and what worked for you. And, I think it's, I think it's an exciting time for your business. That's, that's very cool. Well, and I think too, it's like, um, you know, everybody, it's like going to the gym, you know, it's like, oh, you have all those people at the beginning of the year that are all excited. And then like by February, so I'm like, it's never too late to start one. And if you just stick with it, you're, you know, even if you take a hiatus, like I remember with Beachbody, um, if I broke that 90 days, I always felt like I had to start all over. And then like one day it hit me, I'm like, I can just literally start where I left off. Like why <laughs> yeah. make it this like big thing? So, so I think it's still a good time. <laughs> I love that. My thing is I always, I always start getting really serious about working out in October. I have some like internal alarm that like is that. like, I need to start working out now before everyone else does. Cause then I can tell myself like I was working out not because it's the, you know, it's year. not because it's the new year. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, okay, but I can also start in August. And so I think you bring up a good point that really, I think right now is a better time to start just because we can leverage all these tools that just came out. So many good tools now. Exactly. So the, I always love asking this of people who understand marketing and audience and, uh, and that is who have you identified as your ideal audience? My ideal audience are um, people like my guests that have had regular, in quotes, you know, regular jobs, but that either um, had always been doing something on the side or finally got to a point, which you saw a lot during the pandemic too, where people were reinventing themselves for any number of reasons. But they're the ones that are doing jobs that most people go like, how did you get into that? Or like, um, why, or how did you make it work? But it's, it's not the, it's not the safe jobs. So it's the people that are doing weird, crazy things. Yeah. That's awesome. I know. I just, I need to go to your about page because you say something about your show that I'm like, I, I, first of all, I'm a huge fan of your intro, so I wouldn't even say like change it, but I just think, um, if you don't mind, can I just read from your about page Please, for a minute? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see you talk about when you started your business and you know, that you had based it around the ideas, uh, of being around and with people that have found that thing that made them light up. It's yeah. intoxicating and addicting to be around people that are living with that kind of fire within them. This podcast is an extension of that. I want to bring you people who are living a life, doing the thing that makes them feel most alive. Uh, they do it in spite of struggles, setbacks, criticism, in the hope uh, that you will hear their stories and see yourself in them. I just thought that is the most beautiful thing. Like, um, so yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I wrote that that was a 2 a.m. Like, idea. that was a good one. Was <laughs> it's a good one. You should like reuse that. That needs to, you know, yeah, definitely if you haven't, I would repurpose that everywhere you possibly can, because I mean, that, that had, how True. do you feel? Doesn't that make you feel something? When well, you it, I mean, it puts me right back when I was thinking, um, of even starting my job, I left my corporate job 
did, you know, started my business as a photographer out of all things because of my running pictures. And it was like people were biochemical engineers by day and would go run these crazy things on the weekends for fun. And like my son who had um, who has Crohn's disease, his surgeon, who was going on vacation right after he had to have surgery was like dropped in via helicopter in like the middle of nowhere in Canada. And I was like, people do weird things with their <laughs> lives. Like, like that's his downtime to relax after like these really intense surgeries. And I'm like, I want those people because like everybody has just, again, they do these cool things when, when you have, you know, nobody else to worry about criticism, you know, you just, what would you do with that? And don't you feel like, how do we not hear this more often? You know, <laughs> how am I just hearing about someone just getting dropped in the middle of nowhere? Like, I, I, of that as a vacation. <laughs> I know, <laughs> you know, I, I had a mentor that he, he did, he advised, uh, you know, fortune 500 CEOs and things. And he, they had, there was this one company that had hired him to come to their uh, executive retreat. And so there were just a handful of the, you know, C-level leaders, Mm -hmm. but it was up at, where was it? It was like either in Antarctica or it was somewhere really, really remote and really, really cold where nobody goes except for like, you know, 20 people a year. I mean, it was some ridiculous place. Like he said, cold, my brain turned off, but you know, it's just one of those things where you're just going who like, that's amazing. I I didn't know companies did that, (laughs) you know? And so I love that that is your vision is to really share these stories uh, with people. Um, and, and before I, I, my next question, I'm actually really excited to ask you too, but um, before I go on to, I just want to kind of, again, tap on the idea that, you know, we just talked about your, why, why mm-hmm. did you start your show? And now we're right, right in the depths of talking about your who. Uh, so as you're talking to people and that's, your, you know, we just talked about your vision for the show, thinking about your listeners mm-hmm. and the people who are listening, what, what problem are you solving for them? And what is their transformation that you see if they were to listen to your show over time? So it's, you know, like, I mean, I was talking about like my crazy son surgeon who was dropped into the helicopter. Like not everybody can relate to, to either of those things. Like, you know, but everybody has something weird and crazy about them. Um, you know, whether it's like, I own more leg warmers than anybody should ever own. Like everybody (laughs) has like these like weird things about them. Leg Um, warmers. Did you say like 1980s? (laughs) Like I can't help myself. Like if I see leg warmers, I have to have them, but everybody has like these quirks or these, um, hobbies that they love that they think is no big deal. Or sometimes, you know, it's a extreme sport or that you love beach body. Like there's a story in there. And so it's, like you don't have to have, like I had Paul Cullen, who was a former basis of bad company on my podcast. And you don't have to be a rock star to have a really good story. Like he has a really good story, but you don't like have to be that person. Um, my friend, Julie, who was on the show, she's an animal behaviorist, but like she's worked all kinds of jobs on the side and to, <laughs> she still gets mad. And I hope, I mean, I do hope she listens to this, but if you call her a dog <laughs> trainer, she's not, she, she has like her masters and all these crazy things about animals, but who gives yourself the title of like this thing and like goes and helps people like, you know, in the Bay area with their like pets that have aggression, like out of all jobs, like how would you even think of that? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, but like, we all have these interesting things about us that show us just like my running showed me my love of storytelling. I would never have normally put those two things together, but over time couldn't help myself. I don't like running. Like it sucks. (laughs) Like, and doing it for a hundred miles is not fun. Like things (laughs) go very wrong. And so, but I loved the activity and the community and, uh, you know, the problem solving, all these things that I've now learned that I also like in my business and why I started it. But so if you listen to the show, my hope is that again, that you see yourself, like my, my about section thankfully says that you see yourself in these stories that one person's story is going to resonate, you know, or that you pick up your guitar again. And like Paul now, um, goes and plays in houses and like cooks for people. Um, and then has a wine label and like to go from having your dream job as a rock star to doing this other really cool thing. I'm like, both of those are awesome jobs. And so my hope is that people look at that thing that maybe that they always thought was a side thing and it could still be a side thing, but they, that that's a significant part of their story. That is a story worthy and worth sharing with other people. Why do you think that's important? I think everybody wants to be seen. 
I think it's a human need. Everybody, everybody's afraid of it. And they also want it really bad, you know, which is, it's always like, I still get nervous before every podcast interview, like so mm-hmm. nervous, um, whether I'm the guest or the host, like I still get stupid nervous. And it's, I think it was true for me. And so I guess it's making that assumption and my clients that I tend to attract to it's everybody wants to matter and like have significance and like that their life here has meaning and purpose to it. Um, you know, that's such a big like problem to try, like, what's my purpose? Like, that's a big question to answer, but you have like these really interesting stories that can help a lot of other people along their way by sharing your story. Um, and the weird things that you learn along the way, like ultra running, for example, when my son was sick, the lessons I learned about just the perseverance of like making it to the next tree or to the next aid station. Some nights with him in the hospital, it was just making it to the next hour, to the next minute, to the to the next thing, which again, like I'm grateful I had that training going into that challenge. Um, mm. That was unique to me. And I'm sure if I was an artist and did oil paintings, there would have been lessons from that, that I could have pulled on. So, but again, like hearing it from somebody you never know who you're going to help when you share your story. So for me, it's, I hope that everybody knows that they have something to say, even if you don't feel like you do. Um, even the choices of like why you choose not to do something, I think are really interesting. So that's mm-hmm. my hope is that everybody knows they have something worth to say and that if they're brave enough, one, it can help people, but that everybody's deserves to be seen and heard. Hmm. I love that. I love that. That's so cool. And so by, so for your audience, are you, what are you imagining for them? Like, cause I, I feel like as a guest, it's hugely rewarding to be able to share the story. So am I hearing you correctly? So as the audience, you're wanting them to maybe stir up the fact that they have a story too, something that makes them different. And instead of jumping away from it, leaning into it and, you know, getting rid of that middle school fear of being different, but instead like that's, you know, pushing in. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I love that. I love that. And, um, that's, that's so great. So, um, cool. So when it, I, I hate that. Cause like, I feel super great about what you're just, I just could just talk about that all day, but now I was like, I'm, I'm trying I'm, not to, cause I'm like, we can go down this path. <laughs> I know, I'm like, I have so many more questions about your life right now, but, but I promised you that I would give you action. I'm trying to stay focused on that. <laughs> I know. This is me but, not being a wordy too, but <laughs> no, I know me too. Really? So, so ultimately, um, but that's so important. Like your whole show is built on storytelling. So I, I really wanted to give us a lot of air, you know, space to be able to do that because it's, I mean, it's really the foundation that your show is built on, but forgive me as I transition into a little more tactical. I like (laughs) it. Let's bring it. Okay. So, um, what kind of things do you, you, before I ask before the, before our interview, I had given you the option of two different tracks. One was, should we talk about profit? The other was, should we talk about preeminence, which is building your audience. And in this episode, we're talking about preeminence. We're talking about how do you get more listeners? I know one thing that you mentioned as well is how do you attract guests? Uh, So they're approaching you as quickly as you're going out and approaching them. So is that fair? You're kind of looking for both sides of it. Okay. Um, So let's talk a little bit about attracting the audience are there ways right now that you evaluate your content to see like, is it resonating or made any adjustments based on what you're seeing uh, with the responses? Are you talking specifically about podcasting? Is that podcasting? Yes. Yeah. Just making sure. Um, so I look at constantly, I mean, I use um, Buzzsprout as my platform, my hosting platform. And so on the back end, you know, it shows like the most popular episodes and it's been interesting to see, um, the big names that I thought would bring me, you know, audience and thing don't, but everybody's impressed with. So I'm like, I still need those to like, be like, Oh, cool. The most popular though, um, are the regular people and they share the most, um, Mm. and they share their episode the most and they bring me the most audience and they tend to reshare their episode as well. So that has been interesting to learn and even, um, making graphics and stuff for people to send out, to make it 
easy for them to share and to, again, like take away all the barriers when possible, give them audio clips, give them all of the things like you do as well um, in your checklist, which is awesome. Um, it just to like, again, take out all those barriers, the smaller um, people tend to share the most, which doesn't always give me um, as many eyeballs, but they, those people after those episodes tend to go back and binge listen, like, you know, to other episodes too. So they have the most engaged following. So, um, so that's been interesting to learn. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, um, also how do you measure whether or not your audience is expanding? Is it straight up downloads on Buzzsprout or is there anything, any other metrics? Um, and then looking to see if my social media accounts, um, cause I was posting on YouTube for a while and then, um, have those unlisted, but still, um, sharing the episodes there to see if that did anything. It didn't, um, but people would still watch it. Just again, it was usually like, like that guy's mom and like his sister or something. So it wasn't like a big generator, um, yet at the time. Um, so it's usually seen if my email list has grown, which that has grown. So that's been a good metric. My, um, my listenership and then social media channels, but I haven't seen my social media channels fluctuate that much from podcasting okay. yet. So, so email in the downloads yes, for the most part. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. I really enjoy, I, I love your YouTube channel, honestly. In fact, you I'm mentioned pivoting. it was, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> well, I have lots of things hidden right now. So yeah, it's brand new. Like I've been playing with some new content to I'm, I'm going for it. So again, September 15th, <laughs> like everything is geared up around that. Awesome. That's so great. That's so great. Well, this is a great time for us to have this conversation then too. Yes. So, well, okay. We're going to dig more into your what, so okay. let's talk a little bit about things that you're doing that works in addition to what we just talked about. What do you believe has been the most effective way or ways that you've attracted listeners and viewers or listeners so far? Um, teaching people how to build their own podcast. So one of my clients is, um, the women's business center here in California. And so putting on how to start a podcast, people will then listen to mine as a reference, putting myself on, um, matchmaker.fm was really good. When I was first starting, that one was amazing and got some very persistent people, which has been good to see that people also like, don't give up after, you know, they get the no or a non-response. So like those ones always get yeses in some way. And, um, and then networking in different online groups, um, like entrepreneur groups, I always go in there and then mention that I have a podcast usually. And so that's also gotten me a lot of new listenership and clients by accident, by default from, from listening to my podcast and then, um, either connecting me with somebody is usually how it happens or then, then hiring me as well. Okay. So what kind of things do they hire you? I mean, I hope you don't mind me asking, like I said, I like to know all this, but so, so someone's listening to your show, um, or someone's referring them to your show, what would they hire you for? So usually when I have a guest on, um, behind the scenes, I ask people, um, you know, is there any connection that I can make for you that maybe I don't know yet, but I can keep my ears out for, as I build my network of people, And then, um, often they will ask me like, so what do you do? Like, you know, and so I will tell them about my business and say, oh, I can, from start to finish can launch your, you know, personal brand, um, or take your small business to the next level. So that was how I was saying it at first. And in the beginning that worked. And then now what I'm hoping, um, as I'm doing my new launch, I'm going to have a storytelling course. And then I have a personal brand in a large course. So that's what I'm hoping um, people will come to so that they can take it. And if nothing else, be better communicators. And if they're feeling brave and adventurous, then they can launch themselves. Oh, I love it. I love it. So, um, and one thing, how, what, so what is your process for getting guests? I know you mentioned matchmaker.fm. That's a, so, so that's I agree. It's an awesome great. one. <laughs> it's a good one to start. And it's funny. Like I went back in there recently and, um, one of the people that I reached out to Instagram had actually reached out to me like months earlier through matchmaker.fm. And I was like, you said yes over here, like come see us. <laughs> so my process, which, um, I will start with matchmaker.fm first, go through and um, see if there's anybody there. And then I put a list together of 
the types of clients that I want to um, interview. So um, I'll put like athletes in a bucket, creatives in a bucket, nine to five people, coaches, and then I'll be like, okay, where are they listening to? Um, what podcasts are they listening to? So then I'll go and fill those in. And then I start thinking like, okay, go look at those podcasts and say like, who have they interviewed? Um, what I want to interview them and then start just thinking about who do I want to know, which I know is super selfish, but that's how the project started and worked thus far. Um, so again, like I'll then reach out usually to through Instagram. That's been my most successful means of reaching out because um, I bypass the publicists and some of the other people that might be gatekeepers. And then I can just be like, oh, I'm so sorry. And then I can go to the, the proper <laughs> channel if that's how they prefer. But Instagram has been um, my, my best form of actually getting not only yeses, but actually reaching the actual person I'm trying to communicate with. That's awesome. I love that. You know, it's so true. Um, you know, I've gotten some of my bigger names from responding to their email. Like I'm obsessed with them. Usually it's like some big name, but it's yep. for, for a reason. And I'll, I'll just get uh, an email and I'll just be like, that's it. They have to be on my show. Like I was just talking about this. And usually it's that kind of urgency that gets it. And then, mm -hmm. and then when your dream is when they respond to you and their assistant or you and their publicist, and they're like, Hey, set this up. You know, usually it's a forward response, but yeah. it's something to do with somebody set this up. So I, I uh, love that you do that. I think it's fantastic. I like and that approach too. It's like, it's, <laughs> I like following those moments again, like where you're like, you just don't even think I'm like, there's something always good that comes from that. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I've got a show. Uh, I, I obsessed with podcasting and real estate. Those are my two favorite things. And other than my family, but those are my I mean, two obsessions. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> those are my two business obsessions. And I have a show with someone and we have a competition. I have someone I really want on our show and he has somebody he really wants on our show. And so we have this competition, like, well, whoever books that person first. And so, um, of so course fun. he's, he's like waiting until everything's just right. I'm just, that's not my style. Like I just do stuff. And then I'm like, okay, that didn't work. And so of course I immediately reached out to this person because guess what? I got an email from him and I'm like, dude, seriously, like, that's what I want to be talking about on our show. And, um, you know, these are the, and so I immediately was like, yeah, you know, I really want you to come on. And, uh, and then of course his, uh, you know, somebody on his team responded, they're like, no, you need like four. 40,000 followers or something. And I was like, I under, you know, so I took that as an awesome. Now I know, I mean, the metric I, is. I, well, I'm not going to wait until then. First of no. all, let's just, but I have, but I already have like, okay, here are 10 reasons why in this case it should be okay. <laughs> so well, but it, you, so, you, you just got to look at it. Like that's my first no. And that, in fact, I told my, my uh, show partner, I was like, Hey, this is, I got my first no. Like I was excited <laughs> as if that's step one is contact. I had to be rejected. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anyway, um, I, I no, I, I love it. Get, the guest side of things is definitely my favorite part of podcasting. So I love that that's so important to you as well. Um, and so one, uh, one thing too, do you, so I see that when I go to your website, when I go to your creating, wait, I'm on the wrong one, playing with fire, uh, podcast website, you have a, have an episodes page and then, uh, there's content on each episode. Is that automatically fed through the RSS? So if I click on episode 27, other uh, words, which I love, is that the description that also is sent to, or is this a new, a written for, um, I think it's content. the same. I think I just write it for, um, Buzzsprout and then I copy and paste it usually, um, and then add to it if I need to, if it makes sense to on, um, the website. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And you have a lot of words. That's one thing I see a lot. Is that a good or a bad thing? That's good. It's okay. good because, um, you know, blog posts is one of the best ways to get more, attract more listeners because you think about it that page is like a landing page all of a sudden. So it's got all this content. So if someone, what do I have open right now? Um, creating a life as good as it looks with Louise George. George so, yeah. yeah. And so you think about it, um, you know, it talks about her speaking as an expert, uh, a TV presenter. So if someone's looking at something and then this shows up as a, as a result in Google for, 
you know, presenting on TV or something. I also uh, I mean, pin them in Pinterest with the audio clips too. That, I, think, oh, good. I wonder if that's done anything over time. Do you, what, what link do you use when you do Pinterest? The link to the episode off of my website. Yay. Oh, that, that's my okay. favorite okay. answer. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank like, you. Okay. I love this. I love this. Pass yeah. Test. Test. Yes. Well, I mean, it's, you know, like there's a lot of right ways to do it, but I, the more that you can juice up your SEO for your web page, you have more control. So one thing that I do, like, if you look at any one of my, my podcasts, there are different places where, uh, I'm strong or weak at any given time, but I'm all about putting resources behind what's working. Mm -hmm. So if I have an episode that's doing well already, that means that already people are digging it, right? So Mm -hmm. they're on the page longer. They're listening to the episode. That's the one you're going to see that we're putting a ton of content behind so that when they're on Google, they're also looking it up. Usually our first default is that we'll create a, a blog page and, or an episode page, and we'll optimize it for interview with that person so that we're showing up higher on for a search for their name. That works really, really, that's a good way to optimize having big name guests on your show without them doing a thing. So they might not be promoting it, but if you can optimize for people searching for their name, then you're going to be attracting traffic who are interested in them. And, you know, you're bringing out these stories, so they're not going to be disappointed. So they're going to land on that page, uh, and still find the content that they're looking for yet. It's going to be increasing, you know, and you know, the more traffic that you get, the more it's going to be moving up in those search results. So it's just a very dynamic way to build your to build your audience. I I can see it as you're saying it. I'm like, Oh, okay. That's just tweaking some things. Like it's not. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's one thing that I like about what you're doing. You're doing so many things really well to create this foundation. And then, you know, all all of us were basic, I mean, marketing is testing. And so it's Mm -hmm. all about like what's working, what's not. And when, especially when you're a small business, I I don't talk to a ton of podcasters who are like, oh, I have unlimited funds that I can just pour into my podcast. And, you know, we're all like, okay, do I buy a mic or do I have someone write my stuff right now? You know Mm -hmm. I mean? We're all making these decisions and, and by leveraging the things that are already working, we just get so much more traction. So, um, I love what you have. So I'll get to that point part. I usually I spoil it right now. I start just like, blah, these are all the things you're doing great, but I'm going to try to just, take a deep breath and keep going. So I'm assuming you do, do you have a formal social media strategy for (laughs) promoting your show? Um, I did, I did. I don't currently. And I have one, I'm open to one because I haven't thought that far. I mean, I'm like, that's four weeks away. Like like a week out my, what I was doing was um, like the day that the episode came out, um, the person would already be notified, have all the assets to share. I would already be sharing them across all of my social media, the, the episode, the blog would go live. Um, and then like throughout the day, I'd be sharing clips and, um, you know, audio clips and then like quotes and stuff in my Instagram stories. Cause that's where my biggest, um, following is shared on LinkedIn as well. A lot of times cause that was working well as well. And then if something was doing really well, then I would boost it like two or three days later. And then two or three days later, I would mention the episode again. So like that week was like their week, um, to be highlighted in between my regular content. Awesome. And then I would try to make content that related to, so now, like now that I'm actually telling stories, cause my, my current upcoming content for social media, um, for like Instagram will be me sharing what I've been testing and working, um, sharing my stories, um, to, to demonstrate what it looks like for people. And in between there. So like, if I had Julie, the animal behaviorist on, I might share a story about one of our five dogs we have, cause we have lots of dogs or like running into a bear when I was running or <laughs> it would, it would be animal related that we go around stories and, um, to, uh, underpin whatever they were talking about. So that's kind of my, my thinking, but it, there's so many moving parts. So like now it's like, um, I think my energy is going to be spent on Instagram and LinkedIn and then, um, and Pinterest for my podcast content sharing strategy. 
So are you seeing good engagement? Cause I, I love your strategy quite honestly. I think it's fantastic. Are you um, seeing a lot of, of it's um, back end engagement. engagement. So like, I'm not getting the likes or comments, but I'm getting tons of direct messages, um, and saves and shares. So, so that's frustrating, like forward facing when I'm like, no, really I have engagement. Like I have an audience they're there. Um, but the back end analytics have been going up consistently. Um, when I was doing that before the podcasting and then now with the stories, cause I was just testing that has also gone up, but my forward facing engagement is down. Um, but I usually too will share or ask permission. Like if somebody sent me a, a direct, like a direct message, like, oh my gosh, today's episode was so helpful. Um, because this is what I took away and here's how I'm implementing it. I will usually ask them, can I share that with the creator? And if they say yes, then I will go another step and ask if I can share it on social media. My first step is always with the creator. Cause I always want to leave that door open to have like a 2.0 interview with mm-hmm. them, but the, I selfishly want the, the forward facing, um, stuff for social yeah. media. So let's kind of go back to your, kind yeah. of what you want out of your show uh, I know when I asked you before you, I, um, I verbatim, them, it was like, <laughs> I want to position myself as an authority in the thought leadership space and build my network and circle of influence. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking at your engagement as a salesperson, I'm like, you get the best engagement. You know, that's the stuff that, you know, business owners, when they hate marketers, it's because we're looking at all these, what I call vanity metrics where it's yeah. how many likes did I get? How many, you know, how popular am I, but really when, when a business owner wants some kind of engagement, it's something that turns into something else. And so when you're uh, disappointed, you know, I guess I'm just want to make sure I'm clear on what it is, what is it that you want out of your show? What do you see as being a good takeaway from it? So I am, even though my ego wants vanity metrics, um, I want to prove to people that again, you don't, it's not, that's not what's important. So, but I need to have some sort of data to show them. So like the back end stuff I'm happy with and showing them that that's the impact. And again, with my course launch too, that like, once you finally launch something or um, I follow the Korean vegan, I super love her stuff. So when she finally launched that, she had a book, I don't know if I like Korean food or vegan food, but I was like, definitely going to buy this book because I love her. Um, and there's so, I mean, I have my office is covered in artwork from, from people and podcasts and books that I've listened to and over this last year. Um, so I want to show people that it's, you know, podcasting is unique. If you put yourself out there and you share your story because people can connect with you. And if you don't have that long, if you don't have the luxury and the time because you have a day job and can't be on there, you can still share smaller stories yourself, like on your social media to connect with people um, because they'll work even if you don't see the the results right away. Um, Again, I have lots of stories, but I'll try to stop there. So my my win is gonna look like as I increase, like start putting up episodes again, Um, that I do get more of those big names again, and I still get more regular people with good stories to share that are doing cool and interesting things. And all of that is continuing to show my audience that they can do it too. They can go for the job. They can create a personal brand. They can sell at the farmer's market, their chicken eggs. I don't know, whatever their thing is. (laughs) Awesome. So am I understanding correctly? So you're, so you're, and I don't even want to call it a concern. I feel like the only kind of reservation you have about not having those big front end numbers is that you're using your show as somewhat of a proof of concept for the people that you're talking to. So you want to be able to say, Hey, look, and really, while we know that those are, you know, some of these are vanity metrics, Mm -hmm. it's hard to convince other people of that. I know and is getting that those kind of bigger guests really like getting those guests like um because like when I asked some big names they wanted half a million before they would be on my show or interview and I'm like mm. that's awesome like half a million reach because I can get that for you like <laughs> yeah, like what are like what are exactly those numbers yeah and um you know where I I took that as a not yet like how can mm-hmm. I wait a little bit longer and not push too hard and be just borderline obnoxious but still get that yes Um, so for me, it's getting the big names, increasing the audience and like having, um, the, the, again, the, the show is going to be the example, just like my Instagram examples of it. 
And then maybe even having many episodes like on my YouTube down the road of like breakdown of like, here's how I'm doing these two things that you see. So then that way you can see that it works, but I need to have something like numbers to show of some sort that people yeah. can understand. Cause I, yeah. I mean, my podcast, it, I didn't go out there again, it, as I shared as a creative project, but it still brought in money directly from people wanting to do business with me over the last couple of years. And it's still growing, even though I've taken a hiatus. So I'm like, people are still, which I'm like, I have to, I have to go back. I said three years, I'm still within that window. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's my, my concern is as long as it's growing and, um, I'm getting guests, but it's been hard getting some guests and getting the attention of some when, um, like, how do you get that network where you're in like that book launching circle and somebody has a new, like, why didn't Matthew McConaughey come on my show? Like, <laughs> like, yeah, those kinds. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, okay. That's, that's super helpful. One more question and then yeah. we can transition into the next phase. So with you, I, I feel like I'm getting a really good sense of you really want to have be enough of kind of a name brand for lack mm -hmm. of a better term to the point where guests are like, Oh, I totally want to be on that show. So if they're a regular person, they're like, Oh my gosh, that'd be awesome to be on that show. Yeah. And then if they're a big name, they're like, they don't even have to ask you. They're not saying like, Oh, you have to first show me that on one channel, you've got a million listeners. Like they're just like, Oh yeah, of course. That's a, I know that show. Yes. I want to be on that show. Yes. That's kind of what we're looking for is that position. What do you think is standing between you and that right now? That's a good question. That's such a good coaching question. Um, so I think, um, besides the hiatus taking that out, I think it's just getting, um, having more episodes, more proof out there to show. So picking it back up, going for those big names, even like Will Smith hasn't responded to me because I'm like, see, he just didn't receive my, my message. So finding another way to get to him or whoever else is on my, my list right now that I've been asking, um, and, and then I think it's being just louder, like putting my own stuff out there more. So it's more posts, more content, maybe it's twice a day instead of just like the twice a week, um, during those blasts, you know, and maybe making a reels out of it, um, you know, or doing something creative and clever to get attention, but, but posting more content to, to really put myself out there rather than it just being like, Hey, I made a thing like, to, to do it on purpose more. Yeah. Yeah. More, more running, more hill repeats, more, 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 more. So you're, because I know when I watched your YouTube, the first thing I went to, I, I really had to look hard for the podcast. In fact, I had to like go around about way, but yeah, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I did find them <laughs> because I am like that. But, um, but so the first thing that I see, it's just awesome. And it looks like you must create them on TikTok or so is that the, not all of them maybe, but it, it had kind of that vibe, but yet storytelling, not flashy of the reels. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I want it like, just like my episode, I want it to be entertaining. And if it can be educational, even better, yeah, if it can be both. Um, so yeah, I want it to be like where I picture, like, again, with a real, uh, myself, like taking notes, like listening to like the audio clip. So having my guest audio clip and, and then like the caption being like when you're um when you learn awesome things from your guest and then like tag them in a post or something like that mm. so that way it's showcases them and highlights them and still positions me great love it love it excellent okay so i would like to transition into the next part where uh we talk about um before i you agreed to come on like I said earlier, I promised you two things. Number one, I would be prepared. And number two, I would give you one actionable step that would get your results in 30 days. So before we transition into that, is there anything else that you want to share that we haven't talked about yet that I should consider before we move on to the next phase? No, I'm ready for you. Okay. Awesome. So do I have your permission to share some, some thoughts and feedback? Okay. Yes, perfect. Please. Uh, so before we do, I always like to first start out, I like to keep the main thing, the main thing. So I always like to start out with my four piece to preeminence. Number one is to know your purpose, which is why we started with your why number two is to know your people really dial in on your audience messaging, which you're amazing at. Obviously that is your jam. So I love, uh, I loved hearing about 
your, you know, who it is that you're talking with and why it is that those are the people that you want to, you know, encompass. The third thing is promotion. So optimizing the promotion of your show again, you know, sometimes I interview people and they're just starting out. They're like, I have no idea how to do this. How, you know, I only interview people who have had enough episodes where I feel like, okay, now they know they really want to do this and they've had enough experience, but I feel like with you, you're doing all the things and it's, you know, I can feel your repositioning you, you know, it's the same thing, but just kind of in a different run at it kind of a thing. You're putting on a different pair of tennis shoes, but you're still wearing tennis shoes and you're still running. So, uh, so just optimizing the promotion that you're already doing. And then number four is, uh, earning the proceeds or profit to pay for help, which I was going to, I do need to ask you that, but I feel a lot of times we, as podcasters just ignore the idea that we have to do it for profit or we think, oh, we need a million downloads and, or we can't make anything. I feel like you have a good understanding of if you're getting clients because of your show, that's ROI. Like that counts <laughs> as ROI. Do you have help or are you doing all of this on your own? Doing it all on my own. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Okay. So, so that's, and that's one of the reasons why if, if we want to talk about sustainability that really goes into play is understanding the ROI, because if you can put gas on the fire, you like to play with fire. So put gas on the fire and it's, it's going to accelerate kind of a thing. So looking at it that way. So, so purpose, people, promotion, and proceeds for peace. Uh, again, we're not going to talk any, that's as much as I'm going to talk about proceeds. Uh, it was what you just heard, but it, having the proceeds makes those other three things possible over time. So you ready? ready. <laughs> okay. So we're going to talk about three things. Number one, I'm going to share some things that I think you're super strong at. This will not be all inclusive. I think you just have a really good layer of awesome. And so, but I want to share the things that just really jumped out at me. Then I'm going to share some areas of opportunity in no particular order and no prior, like, I wouldn't even say you have to do any of them. Those are just, are, they're just going to be areas that I'm like, wow, I saw this. And maybe if you tried this or that, sometimes when I share them, people are already going on that route. And so it's just helpful to hear it because ultimately I feel, and, and I mentioned this earlier that we get so many ideas that it's not helpful because we just need to know what's next. And so the third thing I'm going to share is this is what I would do if there was just one thing that you could do out of the whole list. So, so here we go. So some things that I think that you're just doing amazingly. Number one, um, I, I just feel like the design of your website is awesome. I am in love with your intro though. Like that was the top. Of, I'm like, how'd I go off my list? I love your intro. I started your show and I was like, yeah, I'm totally listening to this. This is going to be awesome. So I, you know, the first 30 seconds is the prime real estate and you use it well. So I don't know, you, you're welcome to like jump in and say, yay. I love yeah, my, no, I'm too. super happy. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> proud of it. It just, it was the one thing that I invested into my creative project before I even got started. I was like, I'm going to spend my money here and I'm very proud of it. And I don't think it, it won't need to change anytime soon. So I'm very no. Proud. Very no, well, it's, it's enjoyable to listen to as well as the messaging, you know, you, you definitely got the messaging down. So, and, and you have a man who says it, which I'm a huge fan of women having men intro or men having win, women intro just to get that, you know, just emotional. I don't know. I just, there's something to it. Someone told me that at one point, I'm sure that there's data to back it, but I don't know. Oh, if no, you know it just but, felt right. And I was yeah. like, yes, like I, I, <laughs> It just this felt is too dramatic if I was trying to do a movie <laughs> intro voice myself. Yeah, that's awesome. So love it, love it. Um, and then also I gushed about your YouTube this whole time. So it kind of took away my number two thing, which is also I'm equally as enthusiastic about, and that's your YouTube. Uh, you call them reels, is that right? Or yeah. oh, they're the short, yeah, they're yes, the short shorts. versions that are the wides. Okay. See, I'm so yeah, I love them. I um Number one, you really are a good storyteller. So if you were to say, Hey, I help people tell stories. And then I watched your, your reels, I'd be like, okay, you're very well qualified to do that because, and I, I encourage anyone just go check out Ashley's, um, short, uh, reels. We'll have a link to her YouTube in the show notes. So be sure to go check that out. They're super great. Uh, not only 
are they entertaining, but they truly are informative. So if you're a business owner and you're thinking like, I don't even know why it matters to have storytelling. I don't, how does it fit? Well, the reels tell you how it fits also. So they're very well told stories as well as telling you why it's important to tell stories. So I love it. Love it. Huge fan. And I think it's anybody listening to this show, you will get a ton of value out of watching that. So it's going to help your, I think it will help you with your own messaging as well. So, um, so good. And like I said, there's a lot of things. I love that you have a lot of words on your blog. So all the things that I said leading up to now, I, I stand by as well. Uh, I love that you have a blog for your show that your, uh, when you post about an episode, your link goes back to the episode on your website again, because if later on, suddenly there's a call to action, you know, you're talking about these new programs that you're launching. Well, at the bottom of the blog post, having that as part of it, you can be adding that or taking it out, but you have full control over the person's experience. A lot of people send the listeners to iTunes and they're debating, you know, do I send them? It's like, no, send them to your show and then have links to, to iTunes or Apple, Apple podcasts and Spotify and things like that. Um, so I love it. Love it. Very good job. Yay. Okay. <laughs> well, that was just one of those things too. I'm like, what's my call to action? Cause I didn't have one when I started. So I was like, follow me. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. So I was like, nope, I'm going to just make it look, look sleek and figure it out later. So, yes. Um, so let's talk about areas of opportunity because okay. you just totally nailed it on the head again. You know, not like, oh, this is your to-do list. This is just things I'm observing. Uh, but having that, uh, having that call to action that is well suited, a well-suited next step for your listeners is huge because if they want to subscribe, if they click your subscribe button, they go to Apple. And so it's like, they're going to subscribe. And at the end of your show, you ask them to subscribe. And then it's like, you know, it's on the podcast player. So ideally they're listening to your show you're telling them, and hopefully, like I said, over and over again, go to your about page, grab a piece of that and just like, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. And that, and that might be a good start to the body of your call to action where it's like, this is you, like you, you can admit it or don't, but this is you, like you have a good story. So click on this and I'm going to give you this, but it's a great next step for someone who just heard one of your shows. Like you just listened to an episode now, you know, it, you know, if, if it didn't resonate with you, like, go, you know, whatever, I don't know how go to talk away. to you, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> but if it did, it this far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you did, like you're still here. So here's the next step because you probably want more because that probably felt great and it probably encouraged you. So, you know, you're, you're better at messaging. So like no, something like that, that's brilliant. I was like, um, yeah, that's you're hired. That's what I need to do next. <laughs> <laughs> so at the bottom, bottom of, you know, every page and then highlighted on the first page, just again, you know, coming back to that message from your about page, I just think, you know, driving that home. Um, and then also having your player towards the top. So maybe having a, um, you know, that first, you know, it's not a thesis statement, but you know what I mean? Like the intro paragraph where you're engaging, them. Like, this is why you want to listen to the show, give them, you know, just have it embedded right there at the top. And then they can read the rest of it below. Or if you're going to be optimizing for YouTube, then I would stick the YouTube video in there instead. Another idea might be that, you know, for me, I would, any episode, I would have either the video or the audio embedded at the top. Sometimes I change it. You have a couple guests where I was like, dude, I would be embedding that video at the top because they're so colorful. And I would have watched, I would have, I I would have watched, but when I read the title, I wasn't even, I was kind of like, Oh, that looks, everybody looks encouraging. Like, that's awesome. But sometimes you just get this person where you're like, that's yes. I have to see what she's going to tell me. You know, she's got a great story. So just kind of playing with it that way. Um, and then even not to be afraid to, uh, especially if you have a reel that is related to one of your episodes, if you're like, Oh, this was inspired by this episode, 
embed that later in the blog, you know, because you, that whole Google, you know, Google owns the world. And so if you're playing their stuff somewhere else, I mean, I know it's your stuff, but like to them, it's their stuff. The stuff yeah. And so, <laughs> but, but with the YouTube videos, it, it, you know, you're getting another play from YouTube. If someone like, I know for myself, when I'm watching YouTube on my phone, which is where everyone, you know, most people are watching now, if they're able to get kind of attached to what they're watching and then have that option to open the app, then you've got that description there. You've got links there. So, you know, I, I, and you optimize, I was going to say, you know, optimize your YouTube video description, like you would your blog, but you're doing a great job of that. You have your links. It's really consistent. So does that, is that helpful? So helpful. Yeah. Okay. Good. (laughs) Cause I mean, there's so many moving parts. And again, like you said, when you're one person doing it, it's just like, to not get burnt out and it's like to know that those are the right things I can get through then like the hard part of not seeing results for a while. Cause I'm like, okay, I'm doing all the right things. I just need to keep doing them. So that's just super helpful seeing how it all connects. And, um, <laughs> and I'm glad you like the shorts because like, those are like, I had tons of them on TikTok and I was like, here's good, good examples of what I'm trying to eventually show people how, that they can do for themselves. And it's like, there's a formula. It's not hard. And, um, and so like to hear your feedback too, I'm like, good. And then again, like we were just talked about, like, if there's an episode that it was either inspired by, cause there was definitely some of those that I can then connect everything. So then it all works together instead of it feeling like, because I, when I left my corporate job, which was an in insurance, super boring um, to be, I started a photographer. Like I was like to the book creative. And so like Oh, look at that shiny thing. And look at that. Like, so to, I don't ever want to come across that way. So it feels really good to have everything I'm putting out there be on purpose and connected. Cause on a gut level, I know it's connected. I just like, you're helping me tie in those knots of like where it's all going and how. Oh, good, 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 good. Yeah. And even in, and you might already do this, but even in the YouTube reels saying this was the episode that it was that inspired this reel. Um, so if you're not already doing it, which you might already be Good excuse to post it again. So yes, exactly. <laughs> so I would definitely have them going back to your, uh, to your, uh, podcast page because then it's going to be embedded there again. And so you're keeping, like you said, you're keeping it all together, but it's optimizing It's taking the same assets you already have and just doing more with it. And then Um, you know, you, because you have so much text in your blog, normally I'm like, well, you know, write something different for your blog, but I wouldn't do any of that until you started seeing more traffic. You know, one time I, I did a blog post a long time ago on hashtags and it was on page one forever. And so I was constantly like rewriting it and looking at it through like hot jar, you can go to hot jar and they can track how people use your page and seeing like, where are people following, falling off, but you can just take one page. That's getting a lot of traction and get them to another episode. So, but that's down the road. So again, don't do that right now. Just focus on what we said, but, but it's just, you, you can think about it. It's like, Oh, I did that one little tweak and that helped what's next. And then that's when you can bring something in else in where it's like, Oh, well, you know, if they like that episode, I really think that they would like this other episode and we can trust our blog posts, our blog plugins to do that, but no one's going to know better than you will, because, you know, someone likes, you know, someone in a band talking about this, they might like a story of someone in a band whose song was at the beginning of your thing. And then ended up, you know, getting a deal. So So anyway, again, it's just all about leveraging what you're already doing really, really well. So awesome. Good. Okay. So if I was boss of the world, (laughs) so those are the first two things. Just by the way, can we make that happen? Where do I put my vote? I I don't want that job. I don't want that job. But, (laughs) but if I, but if I just did one thing, honestly, it has to do with, um, optimizing your blog page, honestly. I mean, we spent the most time talking about it, but I do think that, um, having a call to action on your website and then coordinating it with your, your, um, episode, uh, episode pages, as well as embedding the audio at the top and just keeping it, you know, consistent, um, which you are, you're super consistent about it. But one thing too, 
and not, you know, I, I have to like disclose everything, but one thing too, like some of the links didn't work. So I would go oh. to your, um, like, I think there was a page where it's good to know it was, I think the, it wasn't the about page. Where was it? Episodes. Let me just see. Uh, maybe it was your company page. I don't know. There was, whoops. There's one page where it said like, Oh, watch me on video, uh, or, or subscribe on iTunes. Um, and work. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe it was, I know I'm, I'm it's a good thing about finding it 29 episodes and I can go back and individually <laughs> look at all of them. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I think it was like a main page, so it okay. might have been, um, I would go to your company. Oh, here it's this one. Oh, it's the homepage. <laughs> Sorry. I made it. I was trying to make it really complicated, but it's really easy. So, uh, let's see. Yeah. So just, Oh, meet the guests like that. Okay. That's, um, that's a broken, but anyway, so that's an easy fix Fixer. as well, yeah. but good. Yeah. Yeah. So helpful. Yes. So helpful. So good. helpful. So fun. Good, good, good. And then everybody who's listening, um, number one, you're just going to get so much great stuff out of Ashley's show out of her clips on YouTube, as I have said a few times, but go check out the play with fire podcast. So when you search for it, a lot of, you know, music comes like, if you're like me on Spotify, a lot of stuff comes up. So just type in Ashley A S H L Y and it will come up immediately. Her show will. So, uh, and then you can look it up on your favorite podcasting platform or go to play with fire We'll have the links in the show notes as well. Uh, and is there anything else, Ashley, thank you again so much. Is there anything else that you would like to add before we wrap? I think we covered it all, but again, anybody listening, um, whether you're a guest on a show or have your own or thinking about starting one, like everybody has a story to tell. And so I can't wait for you to tell yours and, um, definitely get on this one because it's just been a pleasure getting to talk Aww. with you. So fun. So thank you <laughs> well, Ashley, thank you. And I have to say, you know, between the running and then now you're so great at storytelling. I am just such an over explainer and an over share. I wouldn't call it my gifts at all. I think you're magnificent at it. And so anyone who wants a podcast, being able to effectively tell a story, I think is so important. So I appreciate you coming on and sharing what you're doing. And I'm super excited to hear. I really want you to let me know when you have people, you know, on your show that you're like, yay, this person's coming in. You know, you can I be was cool like, about it. it. Yeah. We can yeah. <laughs> be, be all like, cool. One. You tag your <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Or you can just email me quietly and be like, oh my gosh, I got this person because there's one person I've been working on a year and a half. I will let you know when that one happens. Oh, okay. I went through the appropriate channels. Don't do that. <laughs> So I, I went through the publish list you know? and then it was like, they haven't ever told me no, but it's been a year and a half. So, and sometimes there's a costing money and a not costing money route. Yeah. And I'm one of those, like, I, you know, I just don't want to pay for a guest because I want, and I know that they're still authentic, even if you pay for them to come on, mm -hmm. because that's why they're great. But I just, and, and I might change my mind, but as of right now, I just really feel like I want them to be on my show. I want them having guests is my number. It's so important to me. Uh, I mean, the audience, you know, delivering my audience promise is important as is my mm -hmm. guest experience. And I just feel like, oh, I just, it's just so rewarding if they just want to be on my show. <laughs> so, well, and I haven't paid for one either. And I'm like, there's if they had a book coming out and if I had to buy a certain number of copies, but it was like for a co like there would be like some asterisks that I'd be like, okay, I'd make an exception here. Yes. But otherwise, no, they should just yeah. be on my show. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and real quick too, and, and then we'll wrap, but one thing that, um, on, on my episode, in fact, her name was Ashley also, I have an episode, the first 12 episodes of next step nation are what I call my masterclass where I interviewed all these people who, they either have a podcast that they feel is they, they can call it profitable in one way or another, but I have a lot of guests who are really leaders in different areas of podcasting and, um, oh, Ashley, uh, she, she has a food, uh, podcast. Oh my gosh, I'm terrible right now, but, and she gave the greatest tip on looking for for guests. And that was, she goes, and you might already do this, but she goes to Amazon and looks up books that are coming up 
Do you do that already? Is that no, I know that tip. I'm like, that's a good one. That's a good yeah. One. You know what's funny is I was in the same boat. I was hearing you talk about like authors and why didn't they come on my show? I'm like, oh, I totally forgot about Ashley's um tip it's about a good that. one. It's like I, I go through my dream list and then it's then you start doing some of those, some of those ways. And because you, you again people might just say yes, if they're on that. Yes. Podcasting circuits. You can get exactly. Some- exactly. And everybody really should just say yes. So I mean, let's we're amazing. see. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me just see. I, and I'm, I'm just stalling here too, because I really want to, um, I've, yeah, I just really want to get her last name and, uh, cause it's just was such a good, she was, she was a former, um, red carpet correspondent. And so she's a producer. Ashley Chaney, uh, C H A N E Y. Uh, so she's kind of like a Hollywood insider and she's even the reason when you listen to my show, the reason we do it in the format that we do, it has a lot, a lot of influence from my interview with Ashley. So, uh, so I have to give her props for those, that great advice, but anyway, awesome. Well, unless you have anything else you'd like to share, that's a wrap. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yes. And everybody who's listening again, definitely go check out Ashley's show and remember, don't be average, be brave, take action and make magic happen. Thank you so much for listening.